starts with and ends on a boat. I was born on the east coast of Scotland, where the river forth pours into the North Sea. From rocks to hovercraft, people have ferried themselves across these waters for so long that their understanding of boats is implicit. I am different, though. The only thing that feels absolute when I am on a boat is that I will disembark with vomit strung through my hair. <laughs> because every one of my five senses seems to unite and drag in the horizon inward to the end of my nose, where it is all I can see, yet somehow can't quite focus on. The wind doesn't help. Its constant slapping is unable to silence my thoughts. I will not puke. Don't even think about puking. Oh God, even the word puke makes me want to puke. <laughs> I am no good on a boat. I think despite spending their entire lives in this small region, my parents were also different. Bios moved to another continent with a newborn baby. They say youth was behind their decision. But I have my suspicions that our immigration to South Africa was a result of the vacation they took there several months earlier to visit my aunt and uncle, who had themselves recently left Scotland for Johannesburg. One afternoon, while my uncle was barbecuing, already exotic territory, a steak whose thickness my parents had never before witnessed <laughs> fell off the grill. My uncle made no move to retrieve it. Instead, he let the dog carry it away. My parents, despite being young professionals, ate chicken in Scotland, and mostly on special occasions. In South Africa, red meat went to waste. Who can blame them for wanting more? So, at six weeks, when I was old enough to travel, we made the trip to South Africa. Within 18 months, I had a younger brother, and realization came from my mother, who found herself stuck at home with two kids and no car and no phone. More comes at a price. Yet childhood was made idyllic for my brother and me. A great education, nice home, good friends. But our schools often face threats of violence. Our buses often ran late because of the dangers. Bombs, gunshots, fires, protests along our routes that force us off course. Our home was lovely, but we slept behind a security gate and stalled to separate our bedrooms from the living areas. If we were robbed, hopefully enough value would be found in the rooms in front of the gate that we would remain safe behind it. And although we may have looked the same as our friends, the right colour in South Africa, the British passport we each, we each kept close was a separator. If political and racial tension came to a head, as we expected would happen when apartheid ended, we could leave. Our classmates with South African passports were going nowhere. But on the afternoon we sat together in the yard and my dad simply said he'd found a job in America, I remember the clouds rushing across the sky so fast that those pinpricks at the edge of my vision appeared and the coolness at the base of my neck turned to that familiar clamminess. For the life of me, I don't remember what I thought in those moments, but there, there were the urgent clouds and that draping dizziness I knew all too well. Change was again on the horizon. We arrived in Michigan five days before I turned 16. Everything looked strangely brighter in America, but my vision was also somehow fuzzier, hazier. The reality of a move I now believe I always knew was coming had finally come, but it was no less disassociating. I withdrew even before leaving Africa, saying goodbye to my best friend weeks before our visas came in, and I actually needed to. We were signed up for summer school within days of arrival, but it was in a blur that I took American history as a way to prepare for the school year ahead. I'd never been in class with boys, certainly not boys who took their shoes off and stretched their hairy toes onto the chair in front of them. <laughs> Grand Rapids was meant to be a Jaclyn introduction to the country in San Francisco, the other location my parents could have selected, but it really made no difference. Lost is lost. Getting ready for school in the mornings, when snow turned the sky outside my bedroom window of purple, I could never have imagined in Johannesburg. I listened to the tapes I'd made in the days prior to my leaving. Random recordings of radio shows, some from stations I'd never actually listened to. 
And then one time, I didn't put a tape in, instead turned to something local. I don't remember the exact day or what I listened to. But I think that's the way it happens with assimilation. It sneaks up on you over time, long before the rush realization that it isn't everyone back home who's changed, it's you. And you now find yourself not belonging in two places instead of just one. My brother got married last winter, 16 years after we moved to the States. The evening of the dinner, I found myself getting woozy, even though the rehearsal dinner cruise boat was only rounding the harbour. My 11-month-old daughter had been walking unsteadily for a few weeks before we made the trip to Key West. So although I chose the perfect white sandals, I never imagined that her feet would actually find firmness inside them. Perhaps not a tumble, but like me, some unsteadiness. But my girl has, since she was born at five pounds, exceeded all my expectations. So her fine hair lashed against her little cheeks and she stretched her arms in front of her. It was in this moment, as she took confident steps forward, that I realized my daughter was nothing like me. She already knew her place in this world. And I understood my role in getting both of us to this place. I now appreciate wanting more. And not just because I'm a parent who finally recognizes my own parents' courage in seeking maybe not a better, but a fuller life for me. The price for their desire, I realize, has been paid by my own displacement. My sense of discomfort has always manifested on a boat, in my nausea and lack of balance, because the boat signifies a settled person I should have been. But because I'm not that person, my daughter will be free to find herself without needing to leave her home to do so. It wasn't until I saw my little one's hands riding the wind that I felt the exhilaration of having no control over this motion sick body over where my life takes it. Because as long as I'm in motion, I am going somewhere. I've missed nothing in my life because I experienced this moment on this very boat. <laughs>